During the Buddha's time, there was a lay brother merchant who offered a supply of garlic to the sisterhood of Pikunis, the sisterhood of nuns. He had also given orders to his staff to give the Pikunis two or three handfuls every time they came for alms. Over time, the Pikuni known as Fat Nanda and her three sister Pikunis made it a habit to stop by his house. However, during holiday season, the supply of garlic in the house ran out. The servant explained how their garlic supplies had become depleted, but if the Pikunis wanted garlic, they could just go and take what they needed from the field. Fat Nanda, replacing her disappointment with greed, took an excess of garlic from the field. When the merchant found an empty field but no garlic in the house, he asked his staff what had happened. When he found out what the Pikunis had done, he was angry and complained to his neighbor and friends. The Pikus and Pikunis got word of the complaints and felt ashamed of the actions of one of their order. They were concerned that a negative perception of Buddhism would prevent lay people from gaining benefit from the Buddha's teachings. When asked, Fat Nanda confessed her actions. The Buddha then taught, Greedy people will even be harsh and unkind to their own mothers. A greedy person cannot convert the unconverted or cause alms to come in. However, the moderate person can do all these things. The Buddha then said, This is not the first life during which Fat Nanda was greedy. All the Pikus and Pikunis gathered were excited that the Buddha spoke of seeing the past, and they begged him to reveal that which only he could see. A long time ago, the Podisat was born as a Brahmin who married well and had three daughters named Nanda, Nandawati, and Sundari Nanda. They were all very close and loved each other very much. When the Podisat died, his wife and daughters were unable to provide for themselves and lived on the charity of others. Soon after his death, the Podisat was reborn as a magnificent golden goose who could remember his past life as the Brahmin. It broke his heart to discover that his wife and daughters were living off the charity of others. Seeing how they struggled and suffered drove the goose to action. The goose flew to his old house, set himself down on a ceiling beam, and addressed his family. Seeing the golden goose, his wife and daughters were surprised and confused. The Podisat then explained who he was and that he had come to put an end to their miserable circumstances. The golden goose said, I will visit you often and give you one of my golden feathers. You can sell it and use the proceeds to live in ease and comfort. True to his word, the Podisat returned often and gave them a feather each time. Gradually, his wife and daughters grew prosperous and quite comfortable. One day, the mother gathered her daughters and said, See all that we have here? We only have it because of your father. What will happen if he stops coming? What will happen if he changes his mind? We cannot trust animals. Next time he comes, let's pluck him for all of his feathers, and then we'll never have to rely on him again. The daughters were disgusted and refused to entertain the thought. The next time the Podisat stopped by to give them a feather, the mother, in her greed, called the golden goose down to her. When he came in, the mother grabbed him tightly and plucked his feathers. The goose screamed out in pain, but the mother did not care. She only focused on the things that she would buy with the feathers. 
When she was finished, she looked down at the feathers and saw that they were all black. She was very confused. She did not know that the Podisat's feathers had a special quality. If they were plucked out against his will, they ceased to be golden. The poor Podisat wanted to fly away, but not having any feathers, he could not. Enraged, the mother flung the goose into a barrel and kept him there until his golden feathers grew back. Over time, his feathers did regrow, but as normal feathers, not gold. He bided his time, flew away to his own abode, and never came back again. All he took with him was his sadness. The Buddha then concluded the story with a lesson. So you see that Fat Nanda was greedy in the past as she is now. Her greed had lost her all the gold in the same way that her greed now will lose her the garlic. Not only that, her greed has deprived the entire sisterhood of their supply of garlic as well. Therefore, you must be moderate in your desires, and be content with what you are given, no matter how small it may be. The Buddha then revealed that the Podisat's wife and mother of the three daughters was none other than Sister Fat Nanda. The three daughters of the past were the three Pikuni sisters of Fat Nanda. And the golden goose was the Buddha himself. What do you think the moral of this story is? We hope you enjoyed the video. Click like if you did, and click subscribe if you want to see our uploads.